Okay, so in this video we are installing VMware vCenter 6.x Windows version. In last video we installed SQL Server on this machine. It's called vCenter. It has 12 gigs of RAM, 100 gigs of disk space. We install SQL Server on it, and after that, we went to SQL Server Management Studio. We create a database. We create a SQL login. We give that SQL login um, uh, DB owner permission for that database, and that SQL login we also give a sysadmin permission for this server for the SQL Server. We configured initial size for database and as what I prefer what I usually do and especially in lab environment uh, I set the database size to simple recovery which is good which easy to recover you don't have to worry about transaction log file maintenance because in simple recovery uh, you know take care of itself so as long as you are taking good backups you are good to go and you can even do that in production environment as, lo as, as long as you are protecting your SQL server well you are treating it well taking backup of vCenter database as well as protecting your vCenter overall you will be good to go so and if you don't want to maintain or don't want to go through the hassle of maintaining those transaction log that you see oh my disk space is keep growing and growing that I have to take backup of transaction log to truncate them <clears throat> if you set to simple recovery you don't have to do that because it truncates itself automatically uh, okay what else uh, size don't grow I mean Size of transaction log, of course. Uh, what I was trying to do. Was anything else? Yes, in that video, uh, yeah, in that video, also I have created a reverse lookup zone for my domain in DNS. Let me just show you real quick. And yeah, reverse lookup zone. Oh, come. Reverse lookup zone, and I have created three host records for my ESXi servers. And in respective, their respective pointer records as well. So this is the case so far. And now let's move on and install vCenter okay so vCenter media is right here okay you can go for install welcome to vCenter 6.0.0 install next license agreement I'll go for embedded deployment. In this case, vCenter and platform service controller is will be on the same machine. You can even go for external deployment if you like, where you have a PSC will be running on separate VM or host, and vCenter will be on separate. And that's what say embedded platform service controller it deploy on the same Windows host as vCenter. See, same VM. We have PSC or platform service controller and vCenter. What is platform service controller? Well, platform service controller basically it manages your single sign-on. It manage also manage your security certificates. So. PSC, it's you can say uh, it's a centralized management for 
licensing, certificates, and single sign-on. That's the job of PSC of Platform Service Controller. Uh, you can have even multiple Platform Service Controller for high availability. And Platform Service Controller doesn't require a database. If you deploy platform service controller, multiple platform service controller, in a single site, they automatically replicate information with each other. vCenter, of course, requires a database, and vCenter database needs to be protected. As you can see in here, this one, two vCenters, but they are accessing single platform service controller. You may have a scenario where you have two vCenter and two platform service controller. This one talking to one and this one talking to other. And in case if one of them fails, this one can also talk to that one. You can like configure it through sort of, a, you know, load balancing sort of stuff or something that can provide highly avail high availability you can even manually configure your reason you know to talk to you know, on the platform service control so uh, this is a scenario I'll go for sorry embedded one where I'll keep both in one VM next System name is vcenter.itsense.com. That's fine. What what will be my single sign-on domain? I would like to keep it default, which is vsphere.local, and I would like to specify a password. And if you are joining a vCenter single sign-on domain, then you need to select the second option. Okay, what you would like to do, I would like to run as a local system account, because as I say, this system is just dedicated for vCenter and this SQL server. You can specify a user account here, and that could be a domain user account or a local user account. But make sure whatever user account you use it has login as a service privilege. Maybe in a high secure environment you would like to go for a user account because local system account is very powerful. It's very powerful privilege. Because local system account has almost everything, all the rights. If you want to restrict it, you can specify a user account here and then just grant that login as a service right. But I'll go for option one here. Okay, we would like to use the embedded database, which is Postgres, or an external database. I choose external and choose the DSN that we have created in previous video. And here, once again, I need to specify the username and password. And this is the login we created in SQL Server. I'll leave the default ports, of course. Stick leave it to default unless you have a very, very good reason to change. Okay. All good. Install. And that's it. So we center installation is in progress what I would like to do I would like to pause this video and I will come back when once it's done okay so installation is completed and as you can see the center is successfully installed by default, yeah, it's an evaluation mode for 60 days, and we need to put the license, and there are many things actually we need to do, but in case if you don't put license within 60 days, and it's telling you what will happen, which is 
all host that you will be managing through this vCenter will be disconnected from it. It wants us to launch vSphere web client. We can do that, but I won't do that. So vCenter is installed. Now what next? Of course, web client for vSphere 6 is very good. It's not like 5.5. If you have experienced with previous version of web client and you are annoyed, I repeat annoyed by that, it's a good news for you that vSphere 6 web client is very much better. And I will strongly advise you to switch to that as soon as possible and use it as much as you can because all new features from version 5.1 onwards are only visible and configurable from web client only. So keep this in mind. And now there is a new development as you may know that in future release, hopefully I think in vSphere 7, there might be no vCenter client for Windows. Instead, there will be vSphere client for HTML5, which is phenomenal. Anyway, still we have a chance. I know some seasoned administrators still like to use vSphere client for Windows. Nothing wrong with that. Um, as a matter of fact, I also do sometimes. Um, should we install it here on vCenter or we can install it on our machine? Well, it depends. It won't hurt if you want to install here. Otherwise, you usually install it on the management station from where you would like to connect. But let me just show you real quick. It's, it's very simple, of course. Extracting files. You need vSphere client when when you are connecting to ESXi host directly. Let's say I have a lab environment. I have one machine. Sorry, one computer with good hardware specs and I want to uh, and I have that for lab purpose I don't have to install any OS on it what I can do I can download the free ESXi version install it and then from my existing laptop or whatever computer you may have the additional one I can install vSphere client and connect to that ESXi and create VMs for my lab Right, or there might be some scenario where your vSphere, sorry, vCenter server might be inaccessible. Hopefully not, but if this is the case, then you may need to connect directly to ESXi host. And how would you do that? You would do that using vSphere client for Windows. So, it still it has its value, and you will install it typically on management station, but it's a lab environment I'm installing on vCenter. Okay, install. That's it, and it will install it on vCenter, and once it's installed, it's ready. It's the same way you specify a name and password and connect. So, let me just pause this video and I will come back. Okay, so installation for vSphere Client 6 has completed. And.
that's it so we have installed vCenter and we installed vSphere client and if I fire up Explorer well, I don't think Explorer will connect but because of the flash we need to download Adobe Flash but Let's say vcenter.idsense.com Certificate warning, which is fine. Yeah, log into vSphere web client. See? Adopt Flash Player. Okay, get it off. Flash Flare. So you need to download Adobe Flash Player, and after that should be all good. Um, just let me tell you one thing: uh, Explorer is not one of my favorite browsers, to be honest. So I prefer to download Google Chrome. Oh shit! Okay. I get it. Uh, I need to reduce the security and uh, you know security settings in Explorer and put that in. Okay, security, trusted sites. Okay, I think what was that? Protected mode. I'll just get it. Okay. Well, let me fix the security of the Explorer and download a Chrome. Uh, you don't have to here because it's vCenter so. And this, if you like, you can download Flash Player and change the settings or you know or if you if you are a fan of Explorer but if you want Mozilla Firefox or anything like that or Google Chrome you can do that. So this is it guys that's how you install vCenter and I will see you in another video.